the second. I will now declare the meeting open and uh, ask if there are any conflict of interest amongst our council members. No, nope. thank you very much. And if you get yourself in that situation, just inform us later. Uh, I don't know if our young student here, Eva, is here tonight. She's supposed to be. Yeah, she's supposed to be. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so I'll turn the meeting over to you, Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, item four on this evening's agenda is adoption of published agenda, that the published agenda for October 2nd be adopted as presented or with amendments. Amendments. Councillor Snively. Through your worship and the council, I'd like to make a notice of motion for I won't be here at the next meeting, so the meeting after, um, to do with um, the bylaws for truck traffic on our roads. Okay, uh, I'm going to our CAO. Thank you, thank you. CAO. Through your worship, um, I'm not in opposed to the notice of motion, but we need a motion. What the, is a proposed motion that Councillor Snively wishes to make at that, with that notice? Typically, a notice of motion, you have to have an accompanying motion that you're bringing forward so that the public knows what the issue is going to be that you're going to discuss. So if you can tell us what the motion is that you hope to pass. Sure, I'd like to uh, make a motion that uh, uh, we uh, keep, keep the trucks to half-load law at certain times of year during uh, extreme uh, temperatures. Uh, what's happening is our, uh, give you an example, our fourth concession, uh, the road got damaged again due to uh, trucks, one right after another going down the fourth concession and tearing up the roads. And somehow we got to regulate how we can keep the trucks either off the road or at half low law during the extreme heat temperatures and during the spring. Thank you. And Mr. Clark, you have that, do you? Okay. Yes. Oh, Councilor Snively. And further, uh, as long as uh, Donna's, or our uh, CAO's got the right date, I won't be here the following meeting. So if it could be brought up next meeting. Thank you. Thank you for that. Any, oh, Councilor Volks? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, in terms of the published agenda, one is I want to correct something if I could or if it needs to be corrected. Um, under under uh, its caption, uh, under 15.2, on the, the suspension of my pay as a counselor, it's captioned motion to reconsider. I'm not asking counsel to reconsider taking the money from me. To be quite frank with you, I don't care they take the money from me. But uh, I'm just, I'm just, I want it for the record. I, 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 my request is not a reconsideration. It's a request to have the money, have the money redirected. Yeah. Uh, so through the chair uh, to Councillor Volks, the, uh, in, in this instance, the, the reason why it's a motion to reconsider um, a, a decision previously made by council is because in the original motion from the September 5th meeting, uh, council approved the adoption, approved the recommendation of the integrity commissioner's recommendation, and that re recommendation specifically directed uh, that the funds be uh, paid into the town's general fund. So, we're, your notice of motion is looking to uh, change that direction, and so that's why a motion to reconsider would be required here. Okay. You understand, Councillor? Yeah, I, very, I, I clearly understand. Okay. But, but that that the way that's written and the way that's dictated, it's it's like I'm I'm asking council to reconsider the the suspension of my pay, and I, I don't I'm not asking them to reconsider. As a matter of fact, they can have it. With all that being said, I don't want that to be written in that content. Um, secondly, to that is uh, last council meeting, I put a motion forward to have a to have a, a report come back from our financial department in terms of waiving the development charges for County Road 8 and number 3 bypass. As a matter of fact, I had Jeff do the math for all of council in front of me, and it was put forward in a motion to talk about at this council meeting, 
and I don't see it there unless I'm overlooking it. It was important to me. As a matter of fact, this is like now, uh, I've asked, uh, I'm going to tell you I'm into my second month of trying to get this onto the agenda. All, all as a result of the notice of motion process. I think Mr. Morrison did speak to this last meeting, but I'll turn the mic over to Mr. Morrison, sir. Uh, through the chair. There were a number of factors that need to be taken into consideration due to the length of time you're looking for, such as average assessment per residential household, uh, applying the tax rate to it, and a number of economic uh, assumptions because the economic climate did dip and climb during that period. So we're gathering the information. Um, I'm working with the planning department, economic development, and we will have something coming forward. It's just a lot of information to mine that isn't readily available due to the period of time. So. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Welcome, Eva. Anything else? Nothing, so we're looking for... Okay, we have a motion to receive all the changes and everything. Okay, Councilor Snivy, Councilor Bondi, any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Item 5 on the agenda, adoption of minutes, that the minutes of the regular council meeting held September 18th, 2017, be adopted as circulated. Councilor Bjorkman, Councilor Vokes, any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 6, Your Worship, uh, is our public presentation for this evening. Essex Council has extended an invitation this evening to Caden Blair of Essex to convey their congratulations on his achievement on his achievement earlier this past summer in winning three gold medals at the World Transplant Games in Spain. So, okay, Mr. Blair and Mama. I have a nice report here to read about you. I call you a young man now because you're not the little guy I first met. Recognition of success at the 2017 World Transplant Games. Tonight we'd like to recognize one of our truly inspirational youth. As an organ transplant recipient, Caden Blair has made it his personal mission to get as many people as possible to register as organ and tissue donors. To that end, he and his family have participated in many fundraising and awareness campaigns aimed at getting local residents to register as organ and tissue donors. Not long ago, just this past June, they led a 21-kilometer walk from Essex to Windsor Regional Hospital's METS campus to raise money and awareness for organ and tissue donation. And that's two years in a row. I remember the first one. <laughs> Woo. Just a few days later, Caden completed, competed in the World Transplant Games in Spain, competing in six sports and winning three gold medals in high jump, long jump, and ball throw. We've honored Caden in the past by declaring April the 27th of every year as Caden Blair Organ Donation Awareness Day in the town of Essex. Tonight, we want to or honor Caden for his recent accomplishments at the World Transplant Games by presenting him with a special gift. Now I'm going to bring you up here, Caden.
down to a vote. Thank you, Your Worship. Caden, um, could you stand back up again if you don't mind, please? Okay, what the hell happened? I remember a young, a young man, and I don't know if you remember this, Caden, or not, when you and your father were here, you were organizing and driving for fundraising and money. And I called you up to the bench, and you come up behind me, and at that time, you're about that high. I can't believe the, the, the young man you've grown in to be. Your mom and dad must be extremely proud of you. They have to be. There are no options. So, And likewise, with us in the town of Essex, I mimic that too. And, and, and I, still, I still, buddy, just so you know, I'll tell you, I still got your green T-shirt. Remember the green T-shirts? I still got it. Thank you. Just I, so you know, you, excuse me, you don't yeah. have to stay and listen to the rest of this political stuff <laughs> if you don't want to. Item 8 on the agenda, reports for administration. 8.1, Community Services, Report 2017-025, Re-Essex and Community Historical Research Society Lease Renewal, and this is together with Bylaw 1644 to authorize the execution of that lease agreement. That said report be received, and that Bylaw 1644 for the, op uh, for the lease renewal for the operation of the Essex Carnegie Library Building at 18 Gordon Ave be ready first and second time and be provisionally adopted this evening. Moved by Councillor Bonney, supported by Deputy Mayor Melage. Questions? Comment? Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Through you, Your Worship, just um, want to say that uh, I would highly recommend that we move forward on this. This is a, a great relationship that the Town of Essex has with, uh, with the Essex and Community Historical Research Society, Eckers. Um, they keep care of a building that's a historical uh, landmark in our community um, and gives it a purpose in our community and a great purpose in our community uh, gives and not serves only the, the people of uh, the town of Essex but their outreach is much farther than that and uh, you'll see people from all across the county in that building uh, looking up uh, information on their ancestry so just just want to say that uh, I believe that this is a great relationship thank you thank you sir favor. <laughs> Motion carried. 8.2, Your Worship, is Community Services Report 2017-026, Re Special Events Resource Team October Update. That said report be received for Council information purposes. Moved by Councilor Bjorkman, supported by Deputy Mayor Malaj. Questions? Councilor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just looking through the list, did you not see the Harrow Kinsman Parade on there? Is, do we have a date for that yet? Has that come to the CERT team? Through your worship, um, yes, that is why it's not on here. We haven't received a request for it yet. Okay. Anything further? All in favor? Motion carries. 8.3 is Corporate Services, Finance and Business Services, 2017-06, Redevelopment Charges in Harrell. That said report be received, and that if Council so chooses to support a reduction in the development charges for new single-family residential dwelling in Ward 4 by 100%, that administration be further directed to begin the public consultation process to amend Bylaw 1344. Okay, Councilor Snyder. Moves. Supported by Councilor Bondi. Any questions? I just, Deputy Mayor Melange. Thank you, through Your Worship. I'm just going to I'm just going to say that I'm not in favor of having 100% uh, development charges waived in this instance. Uh, I think it's generous that we're going at the 50% level already at this point in time, whereas we're not doing this with any other part of the community. Um, it's it's. It's only grabbed a small portion of, um, of making some development happen. And I don't believe the other 50% is going to make the difference at this point in time. Um, we have to grab that money from somewhere else. 
it's part of development um, costs that uh, we've that we've uh, agreed to through uh, a development charges plan. Uh, I think we should be leaving this until next year at the 50 percent until such time that uh, we have a development charges review and then look at it again at that point in time and see if we want to continue on with this or how we can get around get around it uh, for the entire community. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Council folks. Thank, thank, thank you, Your Worship. Um, when we do a development chart DC reduction, do we identify that specifically with the, uh, I guess, better known developers in our region? Do we send something to them, a memo that says the town of Essex is currently in a process or currently uh, reducing DC charges? Because even though they talk amongst themselves, they may not even know it. Like if I was to talk to Ben Clunder tomorrow as an IE, would he be aware there's a reduction in DC charges in Harrow by 50%? Would he know that? Because there's the people who, it's okay to do it. It's a great incentive to do it. But it's redundant if they're not aware. Okay. And, and, and I'm sure there's some people know as a result of word of mouth, but I'm talking about specifically the, the iconic developers in our region whether it be Valenti or whether it be Clender or, or whoever it may be, a, a memo specifically sent to them of the reduction and what it looks like to them. Okay, before I go to Nelson Severa, I have Councillor Snively with a comment. Through your worship and to council, um, I understand uh, what the deputy mayor is saying here, but on the other hand, okay, and I understand what Councillor Vokes is saying also. Now, what the situation here is in Ward 4 of Harrow is, we, we have an area that's already zoned for residential growth, and I'll give you a couple examples. Sunset Phase 3, the property north on Walker Road by Colio, that property's been, been uh, rezoned for years and years and years, 15 to 20 years. The problem is we cannot expand outside the area until the infilling properties are filled with housing. Now, here's the problem. Any developer, if I was a developer myself, why would I come to Harrow to build homes in Harrow at a 50% reduction, which we tried and it didn't work, when I can go to Leamington, the same people that own the property in Harrow, Ward 4, and are building subdivision after subdivision after subdivision. And it's because of the 0% development fees. And I agree with Councillor Vokes, do we put out the information to all developers? But the problem here is the province will not let you expand to the outside area until all the infill is filled. You cannot expand north, south, east, or west out of any residential town until the infilling is done. So if I was a developer, there's no way I would come to Harold and build homes when I can go to another municipality and the houses are selling like that and they're never building them. We have to have something to attract housing in the Herald. We're hurting in Ward 4. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say Ward 1 here, we're building homes and we're building homes here because we're close to the city. And we're, we're out here, okay, we're out here, we have to have some kind of attraction to bring the builders here. Either that, or we, somehow, the province has got to change, change their laws and, and municipalities on having people buy these properties and tie up residential areas for growth for 15, 20, 25 years on speculation. But I think the only way it's going to work if we reduce our development fees. Plain and simple. If I get the support, I get the support. I hope I do. Thank you. I'll now go to Mr. Severa. 
Through you, Your Worship, um, those specific properties that Councillor Snively just mentioned, those developers have been notified. They were notified when the reduction of development fees was passed by Council several months ago. Uh, and it's the same situation with the CIP that we mentioned on the walkabout where um, our real estate um, Real estate professionals aware of uh, our CIP program? Yes, they are. We reach out to them on a on a regular basis. Thank you, sir. Don't trust anything. I'm sorry, uh, Your Worship. I I, I just want to bring out one thing here. Liberal Credit Union in Harrow has 80 pre-approvals for homes to be built. People wanting to move into the Harrow area. I went into the CIBC today, and she told me they have just as many. And why would a developer come to Harrow when they can get it somewhere else in another municipality at zero? Plain and simple. Thank you. Why would they come to Harrow? Because the people want the homes built. So you build them, they'll come, is what I'm hearing you say. That's the only comment I'd have to, with regards to that. But back to the Deputy Mayor Walsh, it was your floor, sir. Uh, finished? Okay. And then I have Councilor Bjorkman and Councilor Volks. Thank you. Uh, through the Chair, uh, to Council, I've, I've always argued in favor of we, we need our development charges because that's what finances um, the development portion that we're responsible for. However, I have supported... Um, reduced charges in Harrow because Harrow needs that help. Harrow is a, a community that um, unfortunately has had too many things taken from it and uh, the battle that they have with uh, encouraging families and encouraging people into the neighborhood. So um, for a specific time frame, I will support um, Councillor Snively's uh, motion and uh, to look to see if we can generate more interest uh, in the development in, in Harrow. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Vokes. Thank you, Worship. What's our what's our DC charges currently for a residential home? Are they like twelve thousand or something like that? Okay, we have uh, Mr. Jeff Morrison. Uh, through the chair, for a single and semi-detached dwelling, depending on ward, ward one is 10,456, ward two, 7,659, ward three, 8,738, and ward four is $9,494. So, so with that being said, I'll take the average of $8,500, just quick math off the top of my head. You're, I would assume, based on the home Councillor Snively's talking about being built and erected, would generate a taxable revenue for us uh, probably $33,000 a year. That $3,000 does not specifically come to the town in whole. There's part of it goes education, part of it goes county. So, but with the balanced revenue that we get as a town on that, at, at an average of, of $8,500, it would be my assumption within an eight year period, we, we're, we're just, it's like a cash cow for us. And so why we wouldn't, you know, Eddie Francis did it with the city of Windsor. He, he convinced his council to put a plan in place that that waived all DC charges and Windsor flourished. It flourished. And, and if there was no opportunity to waive the development charges with no recovery, I would say it's a ridiculous idea. But if we think outside the box and we think up, up the road a little bit, a, a DC uh, fee being waived, short term, is painful. Long term, it's beneficial. So I support you, Councillor Snively, just for the record. I think we should be doing it. Even though traditionally and historically, based on the current file, it's questionable about how it worked. But if we start filling those gaps and start really pushing the communication out through the media, through our website, through our, our economic development department, through our CAO, and get that word out there, we're open for business, in a more aggressive fashion, we will capitalize on those opportunities. So I think it's an excellent idea. Because if nobody takes it, it doesn't cost us a nickel. Not a nickel. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Bondi, you and I, and then back to the mover. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I certainly support the waiving of development fees in Ward 4 for a, a short period of time, whether it be a year or 18 months. I, I think that Harrow is on the cusp, and I think we're seeing a lot of new developments in the downtown core, but we need bodies, and we need bodies. We need to have a strategic plan to protect our businesses, and we need to have a strategic plan to protect our education in Harrow. And I think doing this, we're going to make some bigger waves, bigger waves than a 50% reduction. 50% reduction isn't a big enough wave, unfortunately. So hopefully... By doing this, we'll make those big waves and we'll get people to come to Harrow. I know when houses are put up for sale, they're sold in Harrow, whether they're fixer-uppers, whether they're inexpensive houses, or whether they're expensive houses. They sell fast. So I know the demand is there. I get messages all the time, you know, when are we developing? So let's, let's try to make some waves. And, and, if, and if our developers come to us, let's see what else we can do, because I really want to send the message out there that Essex is open for business in Ward 4 as well. Hey, uh, just been doing a little bit of figuring here. Okay, Councillor Snively made motion of two different organizations having a total of 80 homes waiting to be built. Uh, 80 homes, $240,000. If it's, uh, no. Yeah, what is what was the fee? $9,000 for, is that what it was? Through the chair, Ward 4, $9,494, so $9,500. Okay, $9,000, close enough. So, wow, I was thinking it was 3000 but that's what the revenue is. Taxes. Going back through two former CAOs, all I heard was, boy, if we could only get industrial into town, you know, that's where we make our money. We lose money every time a house is built in. Our municipality, the municipality mo loses money. Now, 80 homes at $9,720,000, that's $1,400,000. If they both have 80, you know, a million. I don't know what kind of a tax increase that would hit the town with, a million dollars. Anyone have that for me in the Treasury Department? Through the chair, a 1% tax increase is approximately $135,000. So calculated, so you'd be 7.5% would give you about that million. 7.5% just... Right. Around there. If, if that happened, and, you know, we'd sure be praying for it to happen, I would think, or we wouldn't be going down this avenue. But uh, that's a lot of money to a lot of taxpayers that don't live in Harrow. And I would be speaking the same way if this was happening in Essex Center. I was against, you know, I thought I'd try half a percent, but uh, half of it, and that didn't work. You know, and I'm like the deputy mayor. If we're going to talk about the municipality. Let's talk about the municipality, not one ward versus another ward or anything else. So I will be voting against this recommendation until we have more discussion uh, in the deputy mayor's words, same thing. We need to have more discussion than just what we're having here right tonight. So, okay. So with that, Councillor Snivy, you have the final comment, sir. Through your worship, I, I I understand what you're saying. I really do. But if it was Ward One that needed help, I'd be making the same recommendation here. If it was Ward One. And you know I'm a counselor for the whole municipality. If it was Ward 1, I'd be making that motion tonight. If it was Ward 2, I'd be making that. If it was Ward 3, I would. Ward 4 is hurting. Okay, we tried to 50%. It didn't work. Councillor Vokes said we're going to re recover it. And sure, it's going to be sh short-term it's going to be pain for long-term gain. And we are going to get the tax revenue back. I just can't sit here and watch a municipality, a Ward 4, just fall apart like it is today. It's, it, it's, it's not fair. Like, it's not fair, and yes, I heard it before, the builders put the money in their pocket. I understand that. And yes, that's where the money goes. But... Is it going to bring new development in Harrow, residential? 
Yes. I believe so. I might be wrong. This is a short, we could do it for a short term. I might be wrong. Hey, we might not get the growth in Harold, but I think we will. Are we going to get 80 homes? Probably not. Are we going to get probably 40 or 50? I would say yes. So I'll leave it at that. And I hope council supports me. It is the end of the topic, but I do have just one question with regards to 15.3. It, it coincides with this 8.3. I forgot to bring it up as soon as you started discussing this. But we are back here for a notice of motion thing with 15.3. Is this the same thing? It is the same thing. So we deal with this one. We're dealing with 15.3. It was we could just eliminate that that's all i needed to know sir and no no further comment to it so ready for the vote oh councillor votes no we've all had our shot our one shot so there's a motion on the table so we're only getting one vote so oh okay through the chair the motion uh, at present is to receive the report and and for council to support the reduction in development charges for new single family residential dwellings in ward four by 100 percent and to so direct administration to begin the public consultation process to um, revise bylaw 1344. Yeah. okay and to uh, oh. i was just going to ask for a time period because so we have a friendly be... amendment Okay, Mrs. Hunter, our CAO has comment. Through you, Your Worship, I just want to clear it up with Council that tonight we're not passing any bylaws. We're not passing any motions that will reduce development charges. This requires a 60-day, I believe, uh, consultation process with the public and with developers. So tonight, all we're, you're guiding us to do is to go ahead and start that process. So. I just want to make it clear that they we're not instantly reducing development charges. So we're all in favor. Okay. Okay. Recorded vote requested by Councillor Vokes. So on the stated motion, Councillor Vokes, how do you vote? Support. Support. Councillor Bjorkman? Support. Councillor Snively? Support. Councillor Bondi? Support. Mayor McDermott? Support. And Deputy Mayor Malosh? Support. On the stated motion, Councillor Vokes voted in support. Councillor Bjorkman, support. Councillor Snively, support. Councillor Bondi, support. Deputy Mayor, or, sorry. Councillor Bondi, support. Mayor McDermott, support. And Deputy Mayor Malosh, support. So with a recorded vote of six in support and zero opposed, the motion is carried. Wow. Thank you, sir. Mr. Napsey, sir. Uh, through your worship, I just want to add something now that council's uh, uh, voted on that. Um, and it's in the body of the report, and I just want to highlight it that, you know, although uh, um, the reduction of de development charges can be an incentive to um, spur residential development, some of the other things that administration is going to be looking at moving forward are some other factors that influence the rate of development in Harrow. So we're looking at proposing um, to do a preliminary study. Uh, would include an overview of Harold's landscape, demographics, hard services, soft services, environmental considerations, and uh, as well the provincial and municipal policies guiding land. So that'll get us out there, consult with the stakeholders um, in, in the area's development community. So that's something we'll bring back in 2018. It's something that might be tied to the development studies um, update in 2018 as well. Uh, and we might be able to expand and, and just really get a better look at, at some other ways that we can uh, spur development in here. So. Thank you, sir. 8.4 on the agenda this evening, infrastructure and development report 2017-10, results of request for proposal municipal environmental assessment project for Hanlon Street extension. The said report be received and that the request for proposal 
be awarded to BT Engineering Inc. in the amount of $132,000, 384.67, including applicable taxes. Moved by Councillor Vokes, supported by Councillor Bjorkman with a question. Thank you, through your worship, uh, to Mr. Nepsey. Is there, do we have a hearing any timelines with regard to uh, the Hamlin Street extension? Sir, I know we're doing the EA and everything for it, but have we have we gotten anything back from the ministry with regard to moving forward? Thank you, sir. Uh, through your worship, as far as the Hanlon extension and the expansion of the highway in particular, they're all kind of tied together. Uh, we've got no indication that uh, the expansion of Highway 3 is outside of their planning for the future, as they call it, which is outside of five years. But um, the EA is to protect the alignment of the Hanlon extension. The agreement is that uh, if we are to build it first, that they're going to pay for that rural cross-section of that. So the first step is the, is the EA, protect the alignment, get exactly how the street is going to look, and then next step would be to um, move into construction. Thank you, sir. Anything further? All in favor? Motion carries. 8.5, Office of the CAO Economic Development Report, re-economic and development report for the months of July and August 2017, that the said report providing council with an activity report for those months of July and August be received. Moved by Councillor Snively, supported by Councillor Bjorkman. Any questions? Councillor Bjorkman. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a comment. Uh, again, thanks, Nelson, for the the updates. It, it really helps us. There are different snapshots every time of things that are going on, but the, the big takeaway that I, I see here is our downtown commercial vacancy rates. Uh, we hear so often, you know, you go downtown, there's just empty stores, there's nothing to find. Both centers are, are, within, are at 8% vacancy, which is considered a healthy vacancy rate. You do need to have stores that people can move into, that have new ideas, that want to be part of our community um, so it was it was great to have a look at the numbers uh, sometimes we, we have too many visuals in our head people go along and they kind of look at the same thing and complain about the same thing um, it's an excellent snapshot for uh, for what we have here so thank you very much for that Anything further all in favor of the motion motion carries Item 9 on the agenda, Your Worship, is reports from youth members. We have our youth council member, Ava Hoffman, here this evening. Young lady. Hi, everyone. Um, I finally have a report tonight, so that's good. Um, so I'm just going to talk about the plan that me, uh, Mrs. Brett, and Mr. Oje have came up with and discussed. So we decided to use a different advertising methods in order to recruit a second youth council member. So these methods include... Um, an ad in the newspaper again, a post on Facebook as well as Twitter, letters to local youth groups, and lastly, a short presentation to certain classes at grade and high schools in the area. So the reason we're doing so much to try and reach out to students is not only to find a second youth counselor, but also to set up a youth focus group that will meet a few times a year where we discuss local issues affecting the youth. So these are the ideas that we discussed and we're planning on putting into action. Thank you very much for that. Mr. Clark. Uh, through the chair, just to elaborate on what our youth council member just reported, um, and she's much too modest because part, part of the outreach is um, she plans on going to some of the schools, speaking to some of the civic classes, uh, and, you know, talking about the virtues of uh, being involved with government and, uh, you know, and volunteering one's time. And so on that note, um, she, the, the plans in the early works is for her to attend schools uh, on her uh, PD days or PA days, uh, so her own time, she'll be going into those schools and uh, and um, trying to to help elevate the uh, the youth council position here. Okay, thank you for that. And I would just say, Eva, if you'd like the mayor to come with you, and I was available, I'd come for support and maybe able to answer the odd question for it. Also, okay, thank you, Contra Bundy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was going to offer my services as well. I, I really believe strongly having the youth member on council, it's great. And I really, I, I, I will play this card. I really believe in having strong 
uh, female role models in our community. We do not have enough of them. So one of the, uh, one of the barriers, I've did, done some reading research, reading recently in a Municipal World magazine where some of the barriers to women not entering politics is the lack of role models. So I just want to let you know, Ms. Huffman, that you are promoting uh, women and young ladies getting engaged by being a role model yourself. So it's, it's really important, and I would love to help you because this is right up my alley. So uh, you can drop me an email, and uh, we, can, uh, we can hang out and do coffee and stuff. I'm excited about this. This is great. So fantastic for everybody working together. Thank you. Anything else? Country folks. Congratulations, Ava, on all your endeavors to, to move things forward. I, I want to talk briefly, if I could, I'm, I'm, to Ava about uh, another assignment. She sounds like she's extremely busy, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to extend an olive branch to you, and I'm kind of hoping Council would, would endorse it. And what that is is, is um, periodically I've had discussions about, and, and we're getting there, we, we're reducing the numbers but our empty storefronts and the bare windows. And I was just wondering if you could, on behalf of the Council of the Town of Essex, meet with somebody at the high school, whether it be the principal or whoever, to talk about an initiative to have the high school participate and fill in those empty storefronts with, with uh, artwork, maybe through the art class or through the art department at the high school, if such a thing exists. And uh, if, if we could, I'd like to see you lead the way on that and set those meetings up. And if you have any opportunities or need any support, we're there for you. And I, I really would like to see that. I think, I think the high school could, could promote their local artwork. And at the same time, we've, we revitalize our downtown corridor with, uh, with some, some nice artwork. Okay, thank you for that. Anything else, council members? Thank you for that, young lady. Okay. Thank you, Ava. All on. Move a receipt. Report. Report. Councilor Bondi and Councilor Bjorkman. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 10 on the agenda. Any updates from County Council this evening? Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you, through Your Worship. Not a lot, whole lot going on. Uh, if that's exciting, that may that would be interesting perhaps to council here, but um, one of the things that may be of interest because we do use this facility is that uh, the County of Essex over the last, probably over the last three or four years has been uh, making an ongoing effort to purchase uh, portions of the, um, the Civic Center. And um, all of us, just in the last, I would say in the last 12 months, uh, some of that's really been um, starting to happen quick, quickly. Um, the um, school boards both own a good chunk of the, of the floor space here in the building, uh, each about 25%, somewhere in that vicinity, between 20 and 25%. Um, both sublease the space uh, back in the day when the school boards, City of Windsor school boards and the County of Essex school boards amalgamated. Uh, there was a decision made by the larger board that they would move to space that was uh, in the city of Windsor. They were uh, larger spaces and could accommodate more bodies. Um, so that's what was decided uh, at that point in time. So both school boards subleased out their property, their uh, their properties that they had here in the Civic Center. Um, we've had some some pretty good um, customers that have relocated to this. Uh, building one of them was the um, Windsor Essex County Health Unit and they take up a large portion uh, two of each of the stories the first and second story uh, but they're slowly going to be moving out of the building uh, there's a new building um, in conjunction with the hospice build out in uh, in uh, Leamington there was a decision to move some of the uh, health unit out to the Leamington area and um, so some of that space was going to become available and uh, in negotiations between the county and uh, the school boards, the school, the counties uh, picked up on both those pieces of uh, real estate here in the Civic Center and just recently and you'll see in uh, this Wednesday night <laughs> it'll be announced that um, the, that um, IRCA will also be selling their portion to the county so that the Civic Center will be completely owned by the County of Essex. So that's something of interest. Uh, it'll make 
uh, development and uh, changes here at the Civic Center uh, much more readily uh, adaptable. Um, when you have four different partners and all four different uh, concepts of where they want money to be spent in a building, it makes it difficult to move forward and even repair a building. So with that said, uh, I just want to let you know that uh, I think it was the right decision and most county councillors, if not all, believe that it's a good move. And um, that's uh, something that you'll see happening is you'll see some changes in the building once the county owns the entire building as well some upgrades so thank you thank you for that sir councillor Schneider and councillor Bonnie through your worship to Richard uh, maybe better clarify that IRCA is not going anywhere there you know so the public understands IRCA is not going there we're just going to lease our space now and it's going to be owned not by IRCA any longer sorry through you mr. mayor uh, that is correct IRCA is uh, signing a, a lease uh, a 10-year lease that they will still remain here for the next 10 years and it's not that they'll be leaving even after the 10 years that was something that uh, an agreement that uh, the county and the IRCA both came up with that they thought that was a reasonable amount of time and then they'll revisit it in 10 years again and and even if IRCA did move uh, uh, it might be to another location close by but uh, they're gonna be here in this building for the next 10 years at least thank you councillor Bondi Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Two things. One thing real quick on that. Uh, when the county takes over, let me know who I can put in a work order to because the toilets, you have to hold them down and use so much water. It's been bugging me since we've been here. So they're not environmentally friendly toilets. Second question that is related to county business. I don't know if anybody from administration or even council has an update on how the vacancy tax rebate uh, open house went and if at some point council should have a discussion, not tonight, but if at some point council should have a decision about their position on the vacancy tax rebate to pass it on to the county. Hey, Deputy Mayor Malash. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so to the first question about the washrooms, and I was uh, leaning towards that. Um, it was, um, it's a lot easier for the county to make that decision that they want to move ahead with repairs and remodeling of the Civic Center once they have the entire ownership. Um, the county's operating budget's a lot different than the school boards and IRCA's, and it's a lot easier for the county to come up with uh, money to repair the building than it would be for some of these other organizations. It's been on the plans for a long time uh, to re renew all of the washrooms in the facility, uh, similarly to what we see on the first floor off the lobby, so that all of the washrooms will be modernized and uh, be water environmentally better than what they are now um, as far as the last part goes uh, I, c I couldn't tell you what the um, what the attendance was on the on the uh, I had heard but it's third party so uh, that they there were some people but it wasn't uh, heavily attended okay I'll get mr. Morrison for comments as it pertains to the vacancy, uh, through the chair, as it pertains to the vacancy uh, rebate open house, um, there was one attendant who owned a commercial business within the town of Essex. And it was countywide, and there was one attendant. So, thanks. Hey, thank you very much for that. Now, to the deputy mayor's comments about county council update, we kind of got off track. Like, we want, we want, yeah, we got off, off topic. You know, we got asking questions about what's going on here at the county. I kind of got a little nudge from one side or the other. It doesn't matter. Like, off topic. We're okay to get these updates, but we're not going to discuss things that come out of that at this meeting. That's all. You know, like, that's what we're trying to eliminate, some of these things that we're not prepared for and everything. So, again... I left the door open and you guys went through it and uh, it's closed now so thank you very much for that uh, I had just uh, one thing Councillor Bondi had asked it, it's kind of County Council because we have a Essex Windsor solid waste meeting tomorrow for the first time in about three months and I will bring up that uh, the fluff and you know the extended stuff tomorrow it won't be during the meeting but it'll be after with our CEO there Thanks. 
11.1 on the agenda is correspondence to be received. That the correspondence listed in agenda item 11.1 be received and we're indicated to further share such information with the community using suitable methods of communication. If I may ask, just to speed things up, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 11.1.1 through 2. 11.1.4. I know sometimes we request that we receive them all, yep. and we'll have that motion. And then, if anyone wants to pick one or two out of them, all four of them to discuss, we can do that. So, motion to receive by Councillor Snively, Councillor Botney supports. Any discussion or comments to any of the four? Councillor Oaks? Oh, no, no, we're only at 11.1 through 11.1.4. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just those. Okay, okay the top four. Yep. Yep. Okay. Any further questions? All in favor of that motion? Motion carries. 11.2 is correspondence to be considered for receipt or receipt in support. 11.2.1, Municipality of Chatham-Kent, re-barriers on Highway 401, that the copy of, course, of, of said correspondence to the Premier of Ontario from the Municipality of Chatham-Kent be received or received and supported, and if Council so chooses to support, the appropriate letter of support be sent to the Premier of Ontario and the Minister of Transportation. Mayor Malash? Receive and support. And Councillor Vokes supports. Any questions? Oops, excuse me. Councillor Snively. To your worship, uh, uh, talking about this, I, I understood that these barriers were supposed to be put in uh, quite, a, quite a long time ago, and it, it never did happen. It never did happen. Um, and I don't know the reasoning why, but uh, it was just somebody just recently lost their life. And uh, this topic come up, and I listened to it on, on the report, news report. And I understand these barriers were supposed to be put up years ago and never did. I just want council to be aware of that. You know. Thank you. Okay. And, that, and that just shows how our senior government moves on, on projects like this, really. Okay. Councilor Bundy? No. no. Okay. All in favor? Motion carried. 11.2.2 is City of Windsor, Amazon's new headquarters correspondence, re regional transit solution, that the email from Mayor Dilkins dated September 25th, advising council that the City of Windsor and the City of Detroit intend to present a bid for Amazon's new headquarters, and said correspondence asking that Essex Council consider participating in a regional transit solution be received or received and supported, and if council so chooses, the appropriate letter of support be sent. Moved by Councilor Vogt, supported by Councilor Bonney. Councilor Vogt. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, in, in the email from Drew Dilkins, did, did, I, I don't see it here unless I'm overlooking it, in terms of regional transit or public transit as a result of Amazon coming. Is he talking about or are they talking about extending the Windsor Transit opportunities to the county? Is that what they're talking about? There's no mention of that here. It just says public transit so what does that look what does it look like we'll go to our CEO Mrs. Bonnie. through you your worship at this point it's just the concept of if we're not talking about specifics in terms of what is being proposed it's just a concept because obviously that will involve a lot of workers being transported back and forth depending on where they're located um, but this is just a concept. It's just supporting the concept of. It's not defining what that is at this point. Thank you for that. So because if it is a regional transit for the county, and specifically Essex, being, so, being uh, on the wishes for us to support from Drew Dilkins of the Mayor of the City of Windsor, then we should be doing that. Because there's seniors and all kinds of people who struggle to get into the city. And if there was a Windsor transit opportunity that would be fantastic as a council we asked them once to do that so with that being said would there could somebody send an email to mr delkins and ask him would there be opportunity to meet with him and get a and get a clear picture of what he's requesting yep okay 
Now, I got the email, and it was the evening before I went on my vacation, and I sent it to our CAO, Mrs. Hunter, you know, and the request was that we support them in a, just like she said, a transportation initiative for this area. And that meeting will be set up. All she's looking for here is that we say yes, just what you want us to do. Say yes. That's all we have to do tonight, and then he will put together a meeting where we'll get more yeah, information. That's to great. It. If, he, yep. if, he, if he inspires to have a meeting with, with uh, county representatives, yep. then I, I, that's all I'm asking. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. And that's by moving and supporting this, which the motion says we're going to do, right? Okay. Any further questions? All in favor? Motion carries. 11.2.3 is correspondence from the Windsor Historical Society Veterans Mem Memories Project. We request to sponsor one or more tables at a luncheon at the Serbian Center on November 10th uh, that the email be received or received and supported and if council so chooses uh, that the uh, Windsor Historical Society be notified that the town of Essex wishes to sponsor one or more tables. Councilor Bjorkman. Receive and support, uh, which one or both of them? Or? Okay, table of eight. Okay. If okay. there's a seconder, I'd like to speak to it. Okay. We have a mover, seconder, Councilor Bondi. Any comments from Councilor Bjorkman first? Yes, thank you. Uh, an amendment to that uh, motion, uh, I would like to see us to have four Essex, Harrow, McGregor High School students and four veterans um, from our, our local, uh, um, I'm going to lose the name. How can you not say where our veterans go and meet? Legion. Uh, Legion. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I think I'm fully in, in support of doing this and supporting uh, eight members from our community to, to take part in it. Okay, and to that point, uh, maybe we could check with our two Legion branches uh, and have them give us names of interested veterans and we could have a raffle, like a draw through the hat or anything. That that would be a great idea. I have Councillor Snively and Councillor Vogt. Oh, okay, Councillor Vogt. Um, I, I'm going to direct this to Jeff, if I could. Um, Jeff, um, in terms of this, would this fit our, our council, councillors, what I call the contingency fund? Through the chair, um, the contingency fund is currently on hold due to the by-election. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Yep. Thank you. I forgot. Thank you, Jeff. For that. Anything further to? The, okay. Um, can we put something in queue? The reason is, is because if 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 this if this is covered by the fund, then I want to if once the election's over. I would like to forward some money to this project because it touches everybody. It's just not maybe Windsor, but it touches all the county veterans. So if you might, don't mind, Jeff, look into that and just get back with me because I will contribute $500 if I can. Thank you. Okay. Anything further to the motion? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 12 on the agenda is committee meeting minutes that the committee meeting minutes listed in agenda item 12 together with any recommendations noted therein be received and adopted as circulated. Moved by Councilor Boak, supported by Deputy Mayor Malage. All three of them and any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. <clears throat> item 13, financial 13.1 is a verbal report from Jeffrey Morrison, Director of Finance and Business Services. Re-2018 budget process update and request to receive council's direction as it pertains to a desired tax increase for 2018. Hello, sir. All right, thank you through the chair. Now, this is exciting. First verbal report. 
Um, so we've been diligently working through the 2018 budget, the 2019 to 22 forecast. Uh, draft number one was distributed to department heads on September 18th per our schedule. Um, draft number two is being finalized and it will be distributed tomorrow. So uh, we're getting closer to the dates that were um, proposed for the first two budget meetings and um, we're looking for a bit of direction from council as it pertains to a potential tax increase. So currently, to give it some context, the 2018 forecast that was adopted last year included an approximate 2.7% uh, increase. 1.3% was towards capital, that was part of our capital levy, and 1.5% was towards operating. So, looking for direction. Okay, thank you, sir. Councillor Snively. Through your worship to, uh, to Jeff, I'm glad we're moving forward with the 218 budget. You know, uh, every year during budget time, we're, we're probably close to being the last ones, last municipality to get it done. But I'm glad we're moving forward and get it done before. Good job. Thanks. We're looking for... Mr. Morrison's looking for direction, and that council's direction for a desired increase for 2018 B, 8.4. Oh, Country Bjorkman. Thank you, Worship. Um, one of the things we looked at uh, through the year was uh, when we did our asset management plan was to make sure that we had uh, funding available uh, to continue to put uh, away uh, for that. Uh, area, so we're looking at, you know, two percent was part of our our discussions uh, at that time. Uh, I think that uh, for me, a reasonable uh, amount, especially considering we're putting that into our budget, is uh, is that we will have a, a two percent increase uh, in our budget, um, and I think that's a reasonable uh, thing to expect, especially based on that kind of spending that we know we're going to have to do. So. For myself, I would look at 2% being a, a reasonable uh, expectation. And there would be no other increase or anything done? Is that, am I getting that right? Like a 2%, we've said put away, put away 2% for the future. No? Uh, to that, Your, Your Worship, what they've just explained to us is they're at the 2.7%, so that 2% is, is in there. So. That's where I would end that, though. Okay. Mr. Morrison and Councillor Votes. Just to provide a little clarification, uh, through the chair, just to provide a little clarification. So last year, due to the library, or sorry, the library, the, uh, the school board reduction in their rate uh, gave us a little more room. So we put away 0.7% towards the capital levy in 2017. For the asset management plan, we weren't planning on do that, doing that until 2018. So the actual increase specific to capital for 2018 would be about 1.3 percent so anything above that would then go to support operating so. thank you for that councillor votes thank you worship um i i don't like taking a fly on the wall approach to a, a, a tax increase consideration my preference would be is that you do a, a 10-year prorated assessment and considering any indexing so if you look at our last 10 years jeff if you could please and look at what our 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 increases has been over the last uh, 10 year period and then average it in based on that and we can't miss it, it would probably be our best assessment and our best direction to do it instead of just going well uh, let's go 2.1 percent the average shouldn't miss it should be get us right in the ballpark where we need to be mr. Morrison uh, through the chair uh, do the adoption of the 2018 to 21 forecast that Council adopted last year. Uh, it gave us an idea, a pretty good idea, as to what our requirements are for the next five years. So the 2018 budget is based off of that document. So we were able to balance each year based on the adoption of that. So we've built off of that and moving forward we'll extend out to 2022. So in that includes the recommendations per the asset management plan and it allows us to kind of uh, smooth out our capital spending and Based on that document, we're in pretty good shape. So, um, just to kind of give you some context there. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, Deputy Mayor Malash. 
Thank you. Through you, Your Worship, uh, to Mr. Morrison. Uh, so I'm kind of the same opinion around the 2% mark would I'd be comfortable with, but uh, obviously any of us is gonna, are going to say that we want, uh, you know, m maybe to have it lower if we can. So I th you're probably going to come back with several scenarios. You're probably going to come back to us and say, look, we know we agreed to 2% if that's what council wanted, but this is what we could do if we went to 2.7 or this is what we need to do. And then we have no choice. We have to go to the perhaps 2.7 or 3 or whatever the number is, but or work it back some other way. But I, I'm not necessarily saying that I'm stuck at 2%, but 2% sounds reasonable, uh, considering costs that are going up and what we want to accomplish as a council. So I'd be comfortable with 2%, give or take. Thank you. Anyone else? So the figure we're going to say is 2%. That's what he's looking for. Okay. Motion to receive with a 2%. Councilor Bondi. Councilor Bjorkman. Any questions to that one? All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. Item 15 on the agenda is notices of motion. The following notices of motion in 15.1 through 2 and including 15.5. Uh, we're presented at the September 18th regular council meeting and these particular motions are being brought forward for consideration this evening. 15.1 is Councillor Vokes notice of motion from September 18th that the caboose at the train station be moved to Main Station, sorry, to Main Street to be used as a tourist information booth or center. Okay, we have a motion. We yes, need second. a seconder now to move the caboose to Main Street. No seconder. I'm going to second it just for discussion. Okay, we will vote on it. Uh, so, Councillor Vogt's comment. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, I know the caboose is, is currently in the ownership, from what I understand, of the Heritage Committee. But what I really would like to see is, is if the Heritage Committee gives it, it uh, their blessing. I really would like to take that caboose and move it up to Main Street okay. and use it as a tourist information booth for resident or for people to go to who are going through our community to find out what the town of Essex has to offer. Because the reality is, is there's a host of different initiatives the town of Essex has to offer, but there's really no place you can go to other than the town hall during business hours to find that out. So, so what does that mean and what does that look like? I actually had some discussions about it, and she's in the audience tonight, Suzanne Allison, a very active person in our, in our community in terms of, of working diligently all the time and trying to en enhance our environment. And the caboose would, would look like, and picture this, it would have a white picket fence around it, it would have a sitting area, it would have... Uh, have Okay, you're not going to speak until I'm just checking to make sure I should be allowing you to speak. I, I should, okay, and that's all I'm asking. I almost wish I didn't second it for discussion because personally, sir. Order. Order. Okay. The floor is here. Okay, go to it. No, look at it. If you don't want me to speak to it, I won't. If you don't want me to. Pardon? I, I don't want to speak to something that you don't want me to. Speak. Okay. So anyways, I, I, I have this vision of, of the white fence around it, a place for people to go to find out what, what our community has to offer. And I would like to see some horse and carriages. I would like to see some horse and carriages staged there to take people on a narrated tour to take people to the Priscilla Memorial Spitfire Plain, to the train station, to our murals, to our cenopath, and then bring them back. And the intent of the horse and carriages taking people around our community would be on, on a donation basis. So when people take a tour of our murals and the history and the 
Senapath and the different historical events that the town of Essex has to offer them, the donations would go to, on behalf of the residents of the town of Essex, the donations would go to a charity. Okay, now we're getting off topic, sir. Point of order. We're getting off topic. Your motion is right here. Move the caboose. Mm -hmm. Now, I've just been informed we're getting off topic. So I'm going to stop you from just moving the caboose. That's where we're at. Okay, I'm done. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Any comments? I have one. I will be voting against this because it is not ours to even consider. Why would I want to put the Heritage Committee on the hot seat by having us pass this? And it doesn't even belong to us, you know. I'm not asking to pass it. I ask to meet with them. Okay. I have the floor. Blessing. I have the floor right now, please. What I read here, be moved to Main Street, the caboose, for information booth center. That's all I know. It says nothing about meeting with these people, and I am not prepared to do that, as I said, without getting the okay from the people that own the caboose. That's all, that's all I'm saying. So that's all I'm going to say, anyone else, to this motion. Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you, Three Your Worship. I agree with the way the wording of the motion is, so Councillor Volks would have to change the wording if I was to agree to this, that we would meet with the train station committee to to see if they, first of all, whether they'd be interested in, in uh, selling it to the town of Essex. Um, but then afterwards, we'd have to look at what the costs are. I know, I know these cabooses are very heavy, and you can't just roll them, because um, being on this train station committee myself, uh, for the last three years, I know that we've looked at having that moved ourselves, and the cost was exuberant. It was you'd have to rent this huge tr crane, so we'd have to look at the costs. The other thing is you'd have to outfit it to be um, uh, accessible, and that was the other uh, item that was so expensive that uh, the train station committee decided not to do anything with it at the time. So, yes, I would be in favor of um, a motion that said look to the train station committee and ask them if they're interested first and then everything else after that but we'd have to look at cost before we actually went into this motion here thanks you have the last opportunity to discuss anything council vote so we have some people that want council members who may want to have something and you have the last word i'm, so. I'm actually going to withdraw my motion completely there we we had a plan for no cost and we don't want to sell it to us there's no mention of selling. So I'm just I'm just gonna pull it out. Forget it. Thanks, okay. Council. Okay. Is that okay with the seconder? I was a seconder. And that is okay with me too, then. Okay. Thank you very much for that, sir. Fifteen point two on the agenda is a notice of motion presented by Councillor Vokes at the September eighteenth regular council meeting that the two months suspended remuneration pursuant to council resolution R seventeen zero nine three five eight from the September 5th regular council meeting be donated by the town to the Arthritis Society. Uh, once again, as advised earlier this evening and at the September 18th meeting, uh, this notice of motion proposes to change a decision previously made by council. And so as a prerequisite to council being able to action this notice of motion, a motion to reconsider would be required here. Once again, that requires two thirds support and that the movers and seconders were by members who voted on the original motion. So that being all, that being all the rest of the council members, other than council votes, there were five of us who voted to accept the recommendation from the integrity commissioner. So we need two thirds of us five to get this brought back and it must be made by two of us, two of the five, to bring this back to the table to if reconsider. I, if I could, your mayor. Um, no, but no, we need this, this first. Okay, go ahead, council. Um, just look at council. Keep your money. I'm not going to beg you to do anything with it. Just, just keep it. Forget it. Okay. Thank keep you very much. Money. 
go that one. So that's withdrawn. Uh, 15.3, Councillor Snively, uh, through, through the chair, Councillor Snively, if, if I understand correctly, that was withdrawn, that notice of motion. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you for that, Councillor. 15.4 is a notice of motion uh, from Councillor Snively, presented at the September 18th. That administration prepare a report on erecting a four-way stop at the corner of Center and Walnut Streets in Ward 4. Seconded by Councilor Botney. I'd like to say anything. Councilor yeah. Snively. Uh, through your worship and to Council. This, this here, I, I'm going to explain. I, I've talked to Mr. Nepsey on it. And uh, the problem here is there's people coming off the main street and what they do, they cut down walnut, okay, and they're, they're, they're trying to get past the downtown area, and then they cut over to Tim Hortons or to Walker Road. This is creating quite a bit of traffic down there. Now, I don't go by what one resident said. I went down there, and it's several residents. This, we have a school that's two blocks down. We have a two-way stop there now. To me, I don't see what the big deal is to have a four-way four stop there. It's a safety issue. This is what I'm looking at. I think Councillor Volts has one of these on here too. It is a safety issue. This is not an issue on traffic study and we're going to do a traffic study and we're going to have an officer sit there and do a traffic count. I don't buy that. It's a safety issue and the cost of two stop signs. This, this is, to me, um, I want to see a four-way stop there. I don't, want to see, I don't want to see somebody get hit there. I don't want to see a kid get hit there. I don't want to see anybody get hit there. But there's people, they come off that main street and they fly down that street. So I'm asking, this has been brought up by Councillor Bondi before. She's had residents uh, complain about traffic and the speed down there. And an officer can't be there every day 24 hours a day watching for cars go down there. That is really, to me, that's not their job. And for, for lousy, two more signs to be erected there at a four-way stop, I think it's a safety issue. And I'm asking council to support this, plain and simple. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Deputy Mayor Malawi. Thank you, through your worship. Uh, not that I'm not in support of it. I just want to hear from Mr. Nepsey on as to his comments from... Uh, from, uh, from that department's perspective. Mr. Nepsey, please. Uh, through your worship, um, you know, Councillor Stively notes it's a safety issue. Unfortunately, it's a perceived safety issue. It's not an actual safety issue. And, and that's what the report explains um, uh, several months back that Council voted on not to put a stop sign there. We've had plenty of discussion on that. Um, we've also um, instructed the OPP to place their mobile speed limit sign, the one that flashes and, and instructs people on, on their speed limit. He had that out there. There was no indication of any speeding issues, none that uh, he, he hasn't seen in any other place he's put it. Sure, you get a, a few that hit the high limit once in a while, but usually he said it's kids trying to see how fast they can go and how fast it registers on the sign. Uh, in addition, we did put out our, our own traffic counter over the weekend. It was put out 4 p.m. on Friday and picked up 4 p.m. today. Uh, I was just texted the data on that. 81 cars traveled through that from Friday night till now. The average speed of the 81 cars is 37 kilometers an hour. There were two out of the, or six out of the 81 that were over 50 kilometers an hour. So there's not a speeding issue from the data that I have right now. Uh, as the report indicated, there's not an accident issue. Um, so what it comes down to, you know, putting stop signs where, and again, there's data to, to support this, putting stop signs where they're not necessarily needed and maybe wanted will create issues for you, will create people not wanting to stop, running stop signs, whatnot. So that was the recommendation at hand. There's no technical reason to put a stop sign there. Absolutely, council can, you know, uh, instruct uh, wherever they like. From an engineering standpoint, from a safety standpoint, that from the data that we have collected, there's no reason for a stop sign. 
You know, when you're sitting out on any residential street, any urban street, and someone goes by at 40 kilometers an hour, you know, if you're sitting out there, uh, uh, you know, having a tea on your porch at 9 o'clock in the afternoon or at night, does it feel like they're flying by, potentially? But the data shows that there's no speeding issue and, and uh, there's no accident issue there. Mr. Marilash, you have the floor, sir. Thank you. That's, I just wondered what, the, what uh, their perspective was from the department. Thank you, sir. Councilor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As Council knows, this has come up before, and that's the reason why we, we did the traffic count. So where was the traffic count? If I could, through you, Mr. Mayor, to administration, where was the traffic counters put? Like, was it put north of Walnut on center? Was it put uh, east of... If I'm on Wal center, is it east of Walnut? I'm just trying to get a visual of where the traffic counters are coming, because if the traffic counter is north of Walnut from center, you may not get the traffic going up Walnut and turning left on center. That's where I think the problem is. It's a, it's a loop around town. People are going, um, they're going up, they're, going, they're, they're coming from the arena, they're turning right at Dock 21, they're going left up, up Walnut and then turning left again. So I want to see where the traffic counters captured the traffic, please. Mr. Nepsey. Uh, through your worship, it was on Walnut Street North between County Road 20 and uh, Center. Okay, so then it comes back to, I don't know, like I would almost like to see a, wall, a traffic counter on Walnut. It, south, was, it was on Walnut. Or oh. like Walnut here, south of Center, and Center west of Walnut. So I can see that go through traffic, because that's, that's the, the complaints I'm getting through. People are going through, trying to get around town and cut to the Tim Hortons. And all of this has happened since the Tim Hortons. I would, I would say. I've been, on, I've been the Harrow rep for seven years now. I didn't get the complaints in my first term of council. I recently got the complaints since the Tim Hortons. I don't know. Maybe we could put out more traffic counts and revisit this file because I feel like so it still needs to be investigated. Through your worship, I mean, 81 cars traveling on Walnut North. I'm not sure uh, how many turn left on, on center, but even if all of them did, I'm, I'm not sure what exactly... Uh, council would be looking to do with that data. 81 cars from Friday night at 4 p.m. till now at, f at 4 p.m. is not a traffic issue. It's, you know, potentially is it a change in traffic for the residents there and you're looking to control traffic uh, um, based on the needs of the residents in the area? That's a different story. And again, that's not an engineering thing. That's a, that's a political thing uh, as far as where you're pushing uh, why you're trying to hinder and deter people going down there by putting stop signs in that aren't necessarily supposed to be there. It's just something to think about. Okay. Uh, Councillor Snyder, we spoke this first time. Uh, hang on. You'll be the last one, okay? Uh, anyone else? I just have a couple comments. That, uh, sorry. We have dealt with this in the past, and the recommendation at that time from the OPP, again, was, no, like, you know, we're trying to slow speed. We're trying to stay green by less idling, less stops. And I, would, I wouldn't put administration to the task of how, finding out how many times have we, council members, in the last, say, seven years, say eight years, came to them with requests to put four-way stops in. I know we've had one on Hanlon ever since Mr. and Mrs. Clifford were alive, you know, put one down there. Like, we've done studies, not warranted. I don't know about today, but I don't agree with putting stop signs every time a few customers ask for it in our municipality. There are reasons why they aren't, and there are reasons why there are. There are some. And there's reasons why they're there, so I can't support this at this time. So that is three of us have spoke, four of us have spoke. Anyone else? Councillor Snipley, you have the last say, sir. Through your worship and the council, you know, I really like to have council support it, but if they don't, they don't, I understand. But I'm just bringing forward what the residents are asking me to bring forward. And the issue here is, this is a big issue. There's a school that is two blocks down the road, and that's the issue. 
spoke, but the, the school is east of east. the road we're talking east. about. So uh, I won't make my comments. Okay. With that, all in favor of before we stop, right? Opposed. Motion carries. Look out for the landslide. No. 15.5 is a notice of motion presented by Councillor Vokes at the September 18th meeting and brought forward for consideration this evening that the councillor be allowed to speak about the integrity and actions within the council chambers during, before, and after council meetings and the responsibility of those attending and how they act in the chamber. Councillor Vokes. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yes, we need a seconder. He's made the motion. Councillor Bonney. Okay. No, sir. Thank you. So in terms of these chambers, and he, he, as it relates to provincial laws or policing laws, these chambers belong to us. They're our chambers. And when somebody comes in to these chambers, and as a result of, of any conflict, however it may arise, anybody sitting up in those green chairs has absolutely no right, no right at all, to physically attack anybody. And if anybody's seen the emails from the lady where the altercation happened with her, if anybody's seen the emails from the witnesses submitted to council, it was very clear, irrelevant to the fact, and council's position and administration's position is, well, this particular person didn't go to the police and pursue charges. Well, not everybody wants to get the police involved. And if you look at the email that this particular person sent council, and I reiterate, she clearly said to us as a council, in her interest and in her safety, what are you going to do about it? And as it stands right now, the question is, what are we going to do about it? We have a certain somebody that everybody knows, and I've, I've been told not to mention no names. So I won't mention any names. But if anybody knows the history of this particular person, I think they won't have a very hard time figuring out exactly who it is. And when this particular person gets up and physically attacks a, a constituent of mine in, our, in my chambers, that's a problem. Point of order, sir. Sure. I will ask you to only speak to what you know, not hearsay. And I would do this with anybody on this side of the chambers or whoever we're talking about or anyone that's out there. This is only hearsay from what, from what you're telling us right now. Because none of your people were in this room when this happened except for the lady and her husband. So all that hearsay with emails is all hearsay. So stick to the facts that you know. Well, the f Yeah, okay, sure. And the fact is I know, the fact is I know, is this lady sent an email to council and said she was physically abused. Simple as that. So I don't need witnesses. I don't. No, I don't. Even though there was a host of witnesses, when, when somebody, unless she just decided to get up the next morning and create this abuse fallacy against her and then launch it off to all of us like we got nothing to do and, and attach her name to it with hopes of that we will do something about it, in terms of resolving that from ever happening again, then then I, I guess it's all it's all hearsay. But I, I don't I don't take what she gave to us as council members in our chambers as hearsay. It was an actuality. It happened. It happened. It clearly happened. So my question to council is, what are we going to do about it? I'm, I'm going to answer for him. My question is to council, sir. And, to you. and I'm going to be the first speaker, sir. I'm part of this council, okay, whether you like I, it or I not. I agree you are, but I'm okay. asking council. And I am going to be the first to speak. As a matter of fact, you should be declaring a conflict. I should frankly. not be declaring a conflict, sir. Go ahead. I will go ahead as soon as you shut your mic off. Excuse me? Please, as soon as you shut your microphone off. Thank you very much. 
this has got absolutely nothing to do with the town of Essex. And you have been told that any number of times by administration. And maybe even the police if you've gotten that far. I don't know that for a fact, but I do know you've been told by administration this has nothing to do with the municipality of Essex. There's not one person that is in this room right now, no, there's two, that were probably sitting here and saw what happened. Oh, I believe only two, because everyone else went out into the hallway when this was supposed to have happened. That's why I say, I wish, I, I prayed that this lady would come forward with a complaint to the police so that the other side of the story, by the witnesses that were in here, could present the other side of the story. Who attacked who? You know, so I'm telling counsel this has nothing to do with the town of Essex dealing with this issue unless there is a written complaint. Nothing that comes to the town of Essex is ever dealt with, and I will go to the clerk to get this verification unless it is in writing. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's a request to get on council, if it's a request for anything, it has to be done black and white. Am I right, sir? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, the only comment I would make is, as best as I can tell, this matter is a civil matter that should be dealt with by the proper authorities. And I would caution council uh, against further commenting on this because they may interfere with, with what could be an active investigation. Okay, so, but I'm gonna open it up to council. You just heard our advisor, but uh, I'm still gonna open it up to council if they do have something, because I'm finished saying what I had to say. It has nothing to do with this. So, council members, anyone wanna say anything? Bondi and then Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Today I had some, some downtime, and I picked up uh, our, our recent one, October 2017 copy of Municipal World, and it's on accountability and transparency. I believe we have a code of conduct for committee members. I think so. So in my job at the library, we've had to actually create a code of conduct for patrons that come into the library, because sometimes people come into the library and get kind of irate for several reasons. So in this article, I don't know if the, re the rest of council does have this article, but this article states that there's a public code of conduct policy that can be created by council. So this isn't going to solve any problems of any incidents that have happened, but the purpose of this policy is to outline the expected behavior and conduct of members of public to ensure inclusive and open environment for all visitors and participants when accessing town facilities, properties, and programs. By adopting such a policy, not only does it create a safe workplace for employees, but also a welcoming environment for the public. Maybe we could have a work like a, such a policy in here, and the policy could be over there, and I'm just thinking out of the box. Maybe this is something that we could do. I think we, we have a code of conduct for council. We have a code of conduct for volunteers and committee members. Maybe we need a code, code of conduct in here. And then this way, everybody's on the same page. Maybe it's a positive, proactive step. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. If you want to read the article, it's on page 9. Mrs. Hunter. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, we do have a procedural bylaw that dictates uh, behavior in council chambers from the audience and there are ways of ad addressing issues with the public in council meeting. I mean certainly we could have a policy but we do have a procedural bylaw and it's very very specific about attend people that are attending council meetings. Okay thank you. Any Mrs. Hunter. Sorry, through you, Worship. And I could leave copies of that section of our bylaw up there for residents to see if, that, if that's something you think might be helpful, but we do have it. When it comes to shh, the whole room, doesn't matter if they're sitting out there or they're on this side of the table, whoever's the chair is responsible for keeping control. You know, did I deal with that? Nope, never saw a thing. No one, no one here saw a thing about it. Is what I'm saying. Like, that, that is my job, and that happened when we had called recess. That's why none of us saw anything or heard, even heard anything happening, and we're all in here. So, anyways. 
Council vote. So we got we got uh, a taxpayer, but and he told me I could use his name. He's not worried about it, by the name of Rick Desjardins. Sent an email in saying that he witnessed it. We have the particular lady where the physical abuse happened to her tell us. So we've had two taxpayers tell us very clearly what happened, and we're just denying the fact that it even happened. So really what we're saying is we don't believe them, and we're not going to deal with it. You're saying that, sir. We're not saying well, then, that. Okay, let's it's deal not with our it. it's not our issue to deal with you. It is a told that. Point, point of order. Is it not There's our change on the table? Yeah, let's talk about We've it. Spoken about. Councillor Volks is speaking last, and we'll vote. Yeah, thank because you. Deputy Mayor Malash has got his hand up. Okay, and I shouldn't be allowed him to speak. You're right, but he got in again. Deputy Mayor Malash. I'll, I'll I'll pass, and I'll I'll just let it go to vote. Okay. Deputy Mayor Mala, or Councilor Fulton. So, so my question to Council is this, and I'll summarize with this. We had two individuals, two taxpayers, make it very clear, very clear to us as municipal leaders that they, they and someone was physically abused in our chambers. And their question to us is, what are you going to do about it? And the answer is to council, because if it was up to me, and it's not up to me individually, but that particular person would never see these chambers ever again, as of right now. So I'm just—that's my position. I'm just wondering what the rest of the council's position is. Well, I, our CAO already gave us the answer. No, I want it from but, my council. Oh, not, okay, I, I, council. What do you want to do about it? Give them your answer. What do you want to do about it? Councillor Bundy. Oh, point. There, this is a, a notice of motion. The motion was to discuss uh, that Councillor Votes be allowed to speak about the integrity and the actions of Council Chambers. There's no question here. There's no motion here. The, we agreed to let him speak. He spoke. We've all spoken to it. I suggest we receive it and move on. Okay. Do we have a motion to receive the report? There's only a motion on the table. Councillor Vokes, Councillor Bondi. Yep, Councillor Vokes and Councillor Bondi. I've got it right here. We're going to. Do you want to read it? You read the motion, not me. Please. Notice the motion is that Councillor Vokes be allowed to speak about the integrity and actions within Council Chambers during, before, and after Council meetings and the responsibility of those attending and how they act in the Chamber. Uh, this was moved by Councillor Vokes and seconded by Councillor Bondi. So we discussed it. Are you going to receive it or aren't you? Motion to receive. Opposed. Motion carries. The motion is to receive. Fifteen point six on the agenda, uh, together with fifteen point seven, as added this evening, are notice of motions that tonight are just being presented only with no action. Those notices of motion will be considered at the next regular council meeting on October sixteenth. Uh, the first notice of motion being presented only this evening is Councillor Vokes. Uh, the notice of motion is a request that a stop sign be erected at the intersection of Hanlon and Eiler Streets. And then secondly, 15.7, as added by Councillor Snively this evening, uh, is a notice of motion asking administration to look, at, uh, to look at the regulation of in regards to keeping trucks subject to half-load road laws during extreme weather conditions. Yes, sir, Councillor. Your Worship, that's not for the next meeting. That's the following meeting because I won't be here. Through the chair, my, my apologies. The first member, or Thank the you. first meeting in November. Thank you. Thank you for that. Item 16, any reports from council members this evening? Okay, reports. Let's go around Councilor Bondi's first hand up. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I just want to thank our CAO earlier for providing some information. As you know, there was a power outage in some of the Elks service area in Harrow and Colchester and some of Kingsville area, and I've been fielding a lot of complaints as to why I wasn't notified, and I, I really wanted to provide, provide an update on the notifications that, that the town, not the town, but the utility company did give out. It was not a town responsibility to give out notifications, even though we did do some. Elk put it on their website. They added an introduction to their phone system so that every caller that called in received the message. Elk personally called all demand businesses in Harrow and Kingsville. Elk called smaller businesses, uh, smaller business customers in Harrow and Kingsville as best as they could. They called the municipalities. They sent press releases to the Kingsville Reporter, the Harrow News, the Essex Free Press. They sent information to AM800. They called the OPP in Kingsville and Essex, called non-emergency police number to notify them, called the school boards, called Harrowwood, and called Atlas Tube. The town of Essex, we also shared it on our Facebook and reached approximately 18,000 people. I shared it several times on my Facebook. I still had some complaints by residents that we didn't reach them. It's really hard to get the message out if you're not on Facebook, if you don't read a paper, if you don't listen to the radio. It's, that's hard. I need to be able to help you help me. So helping you, helping me, uh, checking websites, checking Facebook, um, reading the Harrow News in Harrow. It's the best $30 you're ever going to spend all year. So there's only so much that we can do, and I feel like we really tried and we really did it. I would love Council to at some point have a conversation about uh, reverse 911. I believe the fire department has new software now, so maybe that's something we can add. Although this wasn't a town service, it was utility service. This just really was an issue that I was dealing with the entire weekend with hydro complaints. And I know no matter what we do, we're not going to reach everybody, but I wanted to provide the media and the residents methods of which we did reach, try to reach everyone. Thank you. Hey, before I get to Councillor Smiley, I saw you put your hand up. This isn't for discussion. These are just announcements. So when I come to you, you're going to talk about what you want to make an announcement, okay? Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, you're next. You're up next. You have no announcements. Okay. Uh, Councilor Bjorkman. Thank you to your worship. Uh, just a, a shout out to uh, everybody that was part of the uh, Fall into Local event uh, the BIA held last week. It was a tremendous event, great turnout. Um, we're hoping for uh, a decent turnout. We really did have a lot of people come out to the event. Uh, the town of Essex had a table there. Um, Mr. Silvera and our CAO Donna Hunter were were there and uh, promoting the new website, the tourism website. Uh, had a little bit of stuff to, to hand out some pens and and magnets and uh, people really enjoyed it. We're really engaged. Um, just a terrific event from all the all the uh, business owners as well that uh, that were part of it. So. It was a great night and a really good focus on uh, small businesses and, and our downtown in Essex Centre. So thank you to them. Thank you, sir. Councillor Vokes. No, I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you, through Your Worship. Just a quick couple of reports. A um, couple of events that happened at Coan Park, uh, not this past weekend, but the weekend before, the Mug Run. Um, it's almost like a craft uh, brewery um, event uh, held in just in McGregor there at the Cohen Park. A very successful um, weekend. Uh, Ryan Raymond is responsible for putting that on. Did a great job. Raised about $3,000 for the Alzheimer's Society. And uh, they had about uh, just shy of 800 people visit the Cohen Park for that weekend. Uh, second event was the Cohen Park year in ball tournament and steak dinner. Uh, had about 200 people out for dinner and uh, nine ball teams playing. Very successful again. And all the money that was raised for that weekend will go towards new uh, park equipment at some point in time when the, uh, when the town of Essex and the town of Amherstburg decide that they can afford to replace the equipment. So uh, Coyan Park is doing their part to try and raise money towards that equipment as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have two or three things. One of them being elections are right around the corner or now, whatever. If we could just get an update for our general public that 
might be paying attention tonight from sure. someone. Yep. A little Thank update you. on this, Mr. Roger. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you are correct. The election, uh, the Ward 3 by election is right around the corner. Um, we're looking, voter notification cards have gone out already. Um, we're starting to receive some updates to the, to the voters list. Um, uh, October 2nd is the first day for election signs. Uh, we've we've uh, been doing advertising. We're still looking for election officials either to ask a, uh, help us out on, on uh, election day as a poll clerk or as a deputy returning officer. Um, we've been sending out advertising as well, uh, advising the, the electorate in Ward 3 of the upcoming uh, by-election on October 23rd. Uh, but more immediately, there's a advance, uh, an advance uh, poll on October 14th. That's a Saturday from 9 a.m. to 4, and that's going to be at the Heralds and, and uh, Colchester South Community Center. And then, of course, the election itself on October 23rd uh, will be at two locations, and, and that'll be according to the voter notification cards. It'll be, uh, the one location will be the Colchester Community Center, and then the other location will, and, and the, the majority of Ward 3 will be going to the um, ag building, the agricultural building to, uh, to vote. Um, and I think that's about it. Uh, if I said it already, we, we have been advertising, advising people if they need to get on the voters list. Um, if they need to get on the voters list, they can either contact us here at, uh, or at, at the clerk's department at Town Hall or they can go to the arena, they can go to the, uh, uh, the arena and, and drop off their application to be added to the voters list uh, there as well. Um, I think that's about it, but more importantly, we need election officials uh, to help us out. On, and I believe that we're accepting applications until 6th? October 6th, okay. Um, and, and, and then, of course, we have, uh, and, and then as soon as we uh, are able to find our complement of election officials, we'll be very quickly doing some training. And uh, it's right around the corner. Thank you very much for that, sir. If I may go to Mr. Sweet, uh, we just had a great big, excuse me, our hockey pre tournament thing. No, but he, I can report on this, but I just want to make sure. Was it since our last meeting? It was, wasn't it? A big tournament? Oh, it wasn't. So forget that. Okay. I have an announcement to make on behalf of the good fellows. Uh, they're in trouble. The good fellows organization is in trouble. I don't know how many years the Mayor Melange may know. 13, 15, somewhere around there. I remember the day Mr. Uh, oh, Pulley blank. Mr. Pulley blank came to my office, my first term, and asked me what I thought about having a good fellows come to the town of Essex. He was involved with the city of Windsor's good fellows. Bob we sat down, had a talk with that time Jerry Marion. And they took the horns, and we have a great good fellows organization, which has raised a lot of money through the years for the needy. They're in trouble. We've had some two members. That served on that board. Pass away since our last good fellow get together. They're both from the Harrow area. We have a couple other members from the Harrow area that are almost finished. They're going to try to be involved this year because they're up in age and they're having problems themselves. We have another one, Randy Kaufman, I'll say his name. He's got, just had an eye operation and he is stepping down. And he was one of the biggest ones from Essex Center here himself. Uh, and there's a couple others that are bowing out. We need help. So if anyone has any amount of time, just we have about three meetings a year, I believe, you know, to be a board member, maybe able to offer a couple hours standing at a grocery store or shoppers in the doorway with your bag, be a good fellow. They really need help. And if I ask the deputy mayor, I can't, I got the date of the next meeting. It's 
October the 19th is our next meeting at the fire department in Ward 1. So if you want to come out to that meeting on the 19th, and I believe it's at 6 o'clock, we'd appreciate any help. And you, you can never have too many, I'll tell you that. Uh, if you can't make it that night, but you'd like to be involved, Deputy Mayor Malosh is there, and so am I. Uh, Wendy Pulley Blank is the chair, so you can get a hold of any of us people and let us know that you would love to help, okay? So thank you very much for that. Uh, through through the chair, we've uh, we've been doing announcements. Uh, is that the extent of the announcements, Mr. Mayor? I believe so. Okay. Oh, oh. Councilor Bond. Okay. I think one quick one. The chamber has reached out to the Ward 3 candidates to host a meet and greet on October 11th at 7, 7 o'clock to 8:30 at the at the Harrow Community Center. So that's a meet and greet, fancy word for a little debate at the Harrow Arena on October 11th at 7. So if you're if you're interested in going, uh, please attend. Seven o'clock, Rena. Country Berkman. Thank you, to Your Worship. And the uh, Essex Centre BIA will be holding their Excellence Awards uh, dinner and awards presentations on October 13th at the uh, United Church here in Essex Centre. Um, you can go to the BIA website to get particulars as far as where you can buy tickets. Um, but just to all the businesses and anybody else in town that would like to go and see what uh, their BIA is all about, um, that's again October 13th to Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I group. I'm the only one. Thank you. 18.1.1 on the agenda is bylaw 1642. Be in the bylaw to confirm the proceedings from the September 18th meeting. Moved by Councillor Borney, supported by Deputy Mayor Malosh. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. And 18.3.1 is bylaw 1645 to confirm the proceedings of this October 2nd regular council meeting. Moved by Councillor Bonney and Councillor Snively support. Any questions? All in favor? Motion adjourned. All in favor, I have two, three, four. Motion carries. Uh, looking for adjournment. Miss, oh. yes, with a question. With a question. The Tuesday, October 10th walkabout may not have quorum. If Councillor Bjorkman is gone, you're gone. Yes. Councillor Snively is gone. Councillor Bondi will not be showing up till 6 o'clock unless I can book a vacation shift. So we may want to discuss that Tuesday, October 10th. Okay. I could try to book a vacation shift, but even still, we need to make sure we have enough counselors there for quorum. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if you're not going to be there, let administration know. Is that what you're saying? Yes. You find out. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Great evening, everyone.